I'm Mark Shepherd, and I'm a lecturer in microbial biochemistry in the School of Biosciences at the University of Kent. So one of my main research interests is developing new strategies to combat antibiotic resi resistant bacteria. Also, I'm program director for our MSc in infectious diseases. So I, uh, I play a lead role at Kent in training the next generation of microbiologists in the, uh, in the fight against uh, drug resistant bacterial infections. So you've all heard in the media, I'm sure, that antibiotic resistant bacteria are a big, big problem. You've heard of MRSA, methicillin resistant Staphylococcus aureus, Clostridium difficile, E. coli has been in the news a lot. So the issue is that certain bacteria are developing resistance to several classes of uh, antibiotics. So it's getting, becoming very, very difficult to treat these infections uh, in the hospital setting. So for several decades now, we've, we've relied upon conventional antibiotics like uh, penicillin shown here. But resistance has, uh, has, has become rife now and you know, so many different organisms are resistant to uh, you know, this class of antibiotics and you know, various other classes as well. So the upshot is um, that a, an infection that would once be easily treated is now becoming life-threatening in, uh, in the hospital. So it's a, it's a big problem and uh, action needs to be uh, taken. So just to highlight the scale of the problem, I'd like to focus on one example, so E. coli. So E. coli is this, this rod-shaped bacterium and it can cause food poisoning and urinary tract infections and can also lead to more serious systemic infections, i.e. infections of the bloodstream that can lead to sepsis and even death. And then this, this isn't just a, a third world problem. So in England alone, um, last year, there were nearly 40,000 bloodstream infections which have, con which have contributed to thousands of deaths in, the, uh, in England alone. So it's a big, big pro problem in this country. Anecdotally, we've isolated uh, many uh, e. coli samples from uh, the bloodstream of patients in Kent and performed uh, antibiotic sus susceptibility testing on these. So the way that we do that is we take the bacterium and we plate it onto uh, agar plates in petri, petri dishes and then we expose them to these small discs that are soaked in various antibiotics. So on the left hand side we've got a sensitive uh, E. coli isolate. So this, uh, this is killed by uh, various antibiotics. So we know this because we've got this very large zone of inhibition around these antibiotic discs. So there's no growth anywhere near the discs. However, if you take a look on the right hand side, this is one of our antibiotic resistance strains. So, so as you can see, you're getting growth right up, at, up to the disc. So it's you know, resistant to uh, several different antibiotics. And what we found that half of the bacteria that we collected are resistant to at least one antibiotic. Some are resistant to six different classes of antibiotics. So clearly these, these ones are gonna be very difficult to treat in a hospital setting. So what is the reason for um, some strains being resistant to antibiotics and some strains being sensitive to antibiotics? So, uh, so the explanation involves differences in genetic material. Okay, so, so we use genome sequencing techniques to uh, study this problem. So what we've got here is a, uh, is a map of the circular chromosome of one of our antibiotic resistant bacteria. So in the middle here, that's this uh, black circle here. What I've done is I've aligned several genomes of, of E. coli strains that are very well known okay, around the outside. So these are the coloured circles around the outside. And what you'll notice instantly is that there are several gaps in these coloured circles. And what this means is that our antibiotic resistance strain has extra DNA. And some of this, this extra DNA contains antibiotic resistance genes. Okay, so these are genes that will um, produce uh, systems that degrade antibiotics, produce transporter complexes that will pump antibiotics out of the bacterial cell. 
So we can use this technique to uh, identify the genetic causes of antibiotic resistance. And we can also use it as a predictive tool. So to uh, um, predict which antibiotics will work and which won't work against a, a given E. coli isolate. So we've used, well, we can use microbiology, we can use genomics tools to study the problem. But what about the solution? So first off, you can limit uh, antibiotic usage in, uh, in a healthcare setting and also in agriculture. This is a good idea. It's definitely going to prolong the, uh, the useful lifetime of the antibiotics that we have. However, as, as we've heard in the media, you get this emergence of antibiotic resistance. So eventually, our new antibiotics won't work anymore. So we can't rest on our laurels. We need to develop new strategies uh, to combat antibiotic resistant bacteria. To do this, we need a, an understanding of the biology of the organisms. And this is a, a major focus of research at Kent. So um, specifically, we like to understand the way that um, uh, drug resistant bacteria respond to their environment, particularly during infection. It's, it's essential to have this, this fundamental knowledge of the organism if you're, if you're working in this area. As well as a fundamental understanding, you also need new antibiotics. So one, one approach that we have is to look to nature. So, uh, so we, we, uh, first, first of all, um, one example is, is the willow tree. So in the past, extracts from the willow tree have been found to have therapeutic value um, in, in anti-cancer treatments, for example. So willow trees, they have a very complex metabolism. They produce a lot of very interesting, um, unusual molecules um, that uh, have a variety of functions. So it's a very good place to look for new antibiotics. Also, we look in the soil. Okay, so there's a good reason for this. There's a precedent for this. So in the, in the 1940s, 50s and 60s, there was a, a golden age of antibiotics discovery. So, so most of the antibiotics that we have um, have been isolated from, uh, from soil microorganisms. So, um, so what we do now, we, we get a little bit more creative, look in some un unusual soil habitats, and uh, we've had a bit of luck with this recently. We've isolated some, uh, some bacteria that produce um, uh, chemicals that kill disease-causing bacteria, which is very, very exciting. So, so what we're doing at the moment is we are um, sequencing the genomes of these organisms. So this, will, this will give us an insight into what they can and can't do. And then we'll go on to use state-of-the-art analytical tools at, uh, uh, at the University of Kent to identify the active compound that actually uh, kills these pathogenic uh, bacteria. So as well as um, uh, microbiological approaches, genomics approaches, uh, and also looking for um, uh, new antibiotics in nature, we also use molecular approaches. Uh, so one example of this is our recent work on, on nitric oxide. So nitric oxide is a, um, it's a small molecule that's produced by our immune system in response to infection. So when we have a bacterial infection, our white blood cells will migrate to the site of infection, produce nitric oxide, and this is a toxic small molecule that can, that can diffuse across the bacterial membrane into E. coli, for example, and it will react with a, with a variety of cellular targets. So this will have two effects. It will slow the growth of, of, of the bacterium and also kill the, kill the bacterium as well. So, so this is one way that our immune system clears um, a bacterial infection. So to cut a long story short, over, over the last few years, we've used genetic and biochemical approaches to demonstrate if we can in inactivate a protein complex called cytochrome BD1 in E. coli, then this renders the um, uh, bacterium sensitive to nitric oxide. So our immune system is much better at killing this, uh, this, uh, this pathogenic bacterium. So, uh, so this is very exciting. So uh, here's, here's, uh, this is what uh, cytochrome BD looks like. It's a very unusual um, uh, protein complex. So humans don't have cytochrome BD1. 
So this is good in terms of drug discovery, developing new antibiotics. So we're much more likely to do, uh, be able to develop an antibiotic that can shut down the activity of this cytochrome BD1, but will be non-toxic to our own cells. And that's really what you're after in terms of uh, developing new drugs. So hopefully that's given you a brief insight into the challenges that we face as a society and also a look at some of the uh, microbiological, uh, genomic and molecular um, approaches that we use at Kent to design new strategies to uh, combat antibiotic resistant bacterial infections. Thank you for listening.